Hello folks, this is Introduction to Modern Web Development. Hello world. You get it? That's a world. We're going to scaffold out our whole project. We're going to get everything ready to go so it's it's ready for us to do meaningful web developer nerdy kinds of things. So art with Tobin. What all do we need to do? We need to handle our CSS. We might have a dozen CSS files doing different things because we're, we're all modular and cool like that. And they might be doing modern web stuff that older browsers may not know about. We need to put all the CSS files together, pre-process them, make CSS that everybody can run, throw it over into production. Same thing for JavaScript. We need to handle importing all of our various JavaScript models because we are not spaghetti coders here, no sir, no ma'am. Put all of those together and compile them and tree shake them for when we go into production. Lots of work to be done there. We have UI components we're using because we're cool. And UI components often contain things that aren't really things, like React has JSX. Browser's not going to know what to do with that. Vue has a Vue single file component. Browser's not going to know what to do with that. So you have to pre-process this stuff so your browser can understand it. You might want to do some progressive web app stuff because you're all cool. You want to work offline like the cool kids. Well, you need to set up your service worker and, and cache your stuff. All kinds of things like that. And you don't want to do all this by hand because that would be nutso. You want to use something called a bundler. A bundler is going to handle all this stuff and set up a, a development server so you can do development and see your changes live and be productive. Now the big bundler on the scene is Webpack. I have a like-hate relationship with Webpack. I like what it does with JavaScript. I hate what it does with everything else. But it is by far and away the most popular bundler. And you can spend hours and hours and hours setting up your development environment with Webpack because it's it's a it's a, a harsh taskmaster. But we're not going to do that because we got things to do. Instead, we are going. Let me get this tablet out of the way. Art time's over. We are going to use a tool that's going to do all of that work for us. And that tool is the Vue CLI, which means spoiler alert: we're going to be using Vue for our UI components. And the reason why we're going to do that and not use React is because I've used both and I like Vue more, which means I also am better with Vue. And I also think Vue is a lot easier for newcomers into the UI uh, framework territory. It is much more web-like than, say, JSX is. If you do nothing but JavaScript all day long, especially if you do server-side stuff, uh, React might come easier to you. If you're just a regular person that does a little HTML, a little CSS, a little JavaScript, Vue is going to be much more intuitive for you, in my opinion. This is an opinionated thing. So we need to install the Vue CLI so we can use that to scaffold out our project. And there's two ways to do this. You could go npm install-g for global, and then at view slash CLI. And you can do that. And if you have a slow machine or a slow network connection, that might be the way you want to go. What you can do instead, and what I usually do, is I will use NPX. NPX I didn't talk about in the node section, uh, just because I forgot. NPX is a tool that comes with NPM and it lets you one-off run a command. So you might have a command you run once in a blue moon that you don't want to install. Don't, you don't need to install it globally. You don't want to deal with... When you're on Linux and you install stuff globally in Node, you have to be, do it as, as sudo, and then you can get weird permission things later. You just want to one-off run it, and then it, your system can just delete it when it's done. And that's what we're going to do here. I'm going npx, which means this, this one-off run, the view CLI command. And with that command, I'm going to give it the create option. We want to create a new project. 
I'm going to name it IMWD for Introduction to Modern Web Development because acronyms are just what government people do. It's, it's like our nature. With NPX, even though I've run this before, it's going to go fetch the very latest View CLI tool. And that will take it a few seconds, even on my super fast, cool machine and, and network connection here. So this is where when I, I say you might want to install it globally instead. If you have a very slow machine or a very slow network connection and it takes too long, you can just install it globally so you don't have to do this again. So View CLI is downloaded and ready to go. Now it's asking us to pick a preset. We are going to go with manually select features. And we're going to pick Babel. That's going to handle our modern JavaScript. We're going to check off uh, Progressive Web App because Progressive Web Apps are awesome. We're going to check off Vuex. Vuex will get into a ways down the road. That is a, a data store for your view components. Uh, CS preprocessors, this can trick you. Uh, Post CSS comes built in. So that preprocessor is already there. CSS preprocessors is like if you want to do SAS or less or stylus. We don't want to do any of that stuff, so we'll leave that thing. Linter formatter, no thank you. We will write the ugliest code we can. And unit testing, I'm not even jumping on that train right now. So we got Babel, Progressive Web App Support, and UX. Hit enter. Now it uh, makes for each of these things, like Babel or what have you, it has options you can set in a configuration. And here it's asking, do you want to put those options in dedicated config files, or do you want to bundle all that in your package.json? I like to put them in separate config files, because when I'm messing with those, I'm going to break them, and I don't want to break my package.json. Plus, it's just a little neater. I'm going to hit Enter. We don't want to save this for future use and off it goes. And it's going to set up and scaffold out our IMWD project with all those options. Elevator music, elevator music. Still going, still going. All right, it is done. So it created this IMWD folder and it's saying we can CD into it and then just run. We are good to go. And we're going to do that, but let's do that from our code editor so you can see what everything looks like. Welcome Visual Studio Code. Aren't we great? So we're all set up. When I say all set up, I mean all set up. It installed all the packages we're going to need with Node. It uh, configured our Babel for us. It configured our post CSS for us with auto prefixer. Our package.json has, you can see all the packages installed here, our three regular, our dependencies, our service worker and view and view X and our development dependencies. It's got all that set up. It's initialized Git. And we have git ignore, so we have a regular full-fledged uh, git repo. And this browser list is where you're telling it, uh, I want to support these particular browsers. So it's saying greater than 1% usage, last two, not IE, less than equal eight. You can look up browser list RC options and uh, see what you want to do there. So that's what it made in terms of configuration. It also makes a README, which tells you how to run all of your stuff, which is very handy. It makes two folders. Public, it is things that it just ships pretty much directly down to the client. With the exception being index.html, Webpack will monkey around a little bit here to inject your CSS in your JavaScript. Things like your images, your icon, your manifest will go with your progressive web app stuff. All this stuff is built for you. Your source folder is where it puts your, your worky kind of things, like your components, 
your, your JavaScript, your view store, your, uh, it has assets. Assets here, if you have, say, an image used, used by a component, you want to put that here, let it manage it there. So everything is all scaffolded out for us. So remember it said over here, run npm run serve. Let's go ahead and do that. npm run serve. And let's grab a, a browser window. See, it's done with this little rigmarole, and it's saying you can see your app running at this location. So let's copy that, paste it over here, and there we are. This is our scaffolded out application all ready to go. And one of the great things about Webpack is the development server for Webpack is fantastic. What we can do is we can just change something on the fly, like index.html. The title is IMWD. You can put uh, introduction to modern web development. And hit save. Notice it instantly changes over here. Or if we uh, do something in JavaScript or one of our components, like say we uh, go into our source and this hello world view. You don't need to worry about how this particular thing works yet. You just go app view. Let's go there. It's a little simpler to look at for the moment. You don't have to worry about any, any of this works yet. We're just doing hello world here. Welcome to your Vue.js app, folks, because we're folksy. Notice I just hit save. I did not have to refresh this browser window. This is using a live reload server. So when something changes in your code, when you make a coding change, it automatically injects that into your page. So if you have a big monitor like this, or if you have two monitors, you can have your browser in one window and your code editor another and hit save and instantly see the changes. Already, I've just saved you 18,000 F5s to see what you just did. Already, we're ahead of the game. Now, when we run npm run serve, which we did to start this up, you notice that in your package.json, when we talk about having scripts, when we went over node, these are just scripts that are set up serve and build. What build does, and I'm going to control C to get out of the development server. What build does is it builds our site for production. So when we're in development mode, it's doing very basic development stuff so we can interactively, uh, we can interactively uh, mess with our code. What build does is builds it for production. This means the code has been minified, tree shaken, uh, injected. It is ready to go on our production web server. So isn't that cool? Well, it puts that in this dist folder. So you can take this co contents of this dist folder and copy it to your web server, and that's your application all ready to go. Now, another neat thing it does We'll go back to the uh, development mode. So we'll go back in, press this page. We'll go into JavaScript or our console. And it creates, uh, our, our scaffolding creates source maps for our code. Now you notice we have a bunch of JavaScript files and components and JavaScript from like all of our dependencies. We got JavaScript everywhere. What we don't want it to do is say uh, error on line 18,326 and it doesn't, that doesn't really exist in our source. So source maps let you get from what the browser is seeing back to your original source. Let's take, for example, main.js. Let's put in a syntax error here and hit save. You notice over here, it says we get an error in our console and saying that's not defined. And it's telling us where this particular 
code is. If you, you can read this extension, it's saying it's on line 14, which is right. We can click there and it goes back to our source code. And this isn't the code necessarily that's being run by our browser right now. This is just a map back to the source code. And this lets us get to where our errors are. And this is fantastic for uh, debugging applications. Let's get rid of that before we forget and have that error for the rest of our natural lives. But that is our scaffolding, our hello world. We are going to go into all of these bits and how view works and how to make a view component and everything else. The next video, unless I change my mind, will be dealing with CSS. And what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna erase all this content. We're gonna create a responsive layout that's your stereotypical layout. It'll have a, a header area and a footer area and a sidebar and a main content area. And it'll be responsive so it can switch down for a phone. We're gonna scaffold that out in CSS. And then we're going to go from there. We're gonna build a view map component, a view search component, and a view search results component. And we're gonna use Vuex to tie all of the data for those components together. Very exciting. All right, I will catch you later, bye-bye.